All right, um, let's cover recursive and explicit functions. Hopefully you'll take a moment to pause and set up your page like mine, um, and then uh, we can go ahead and proceed. Um, this is one of the practices that I think students have been able to get into pretty easily, but there's some heavy stuff going on behind it. Um, so um, let's think about it. So I have this uh, idea that of a, for a function, I'll just remind you, a function um, Oops, sorry, excuse me. A function relates just one output for each input. Um, and so some functions don't have patterns and some functions do. Um, when a function has a pattern, there's a couple ways that we can think about that pattern, and recursive and explicit functions are ways of thinking about that pattern. So a recursive function um, tells you how a function starts and how it continues. An explicit function tells you how to find an output for a given input. Um, so pause for a moment and think about that. So a recursive function tells you how it starts and how it continues. Um, but it doesn't tell you precisely exactly if you know if you want to find the hundredth output for the function um, how to get that without finding all the outputs before it. Explicit functions say, sure, if you want to know the hundredth output, just give me the input uh, for that hundredth thing, and I'll and I'll show you the output. Plug a hundred in, and I'll calculate it for you. Um, let's see how that works in action. Um, so there's going to be some complications when we're looking at this stuff, but I'm sure you guys can handle it. Um, so let's look at this first function, which you see over to the left. Um, I have the table um, x and then f of x. So I have x, and my stylus is kind of breaking here. Let me grab a different stylus just a second. Um, let's see if it works a little bit better. Okay, yeah, it feels a little better. Um, so I have um, x and then f of x. And I have 1, 2, 3, 4, and then 64, uh, 16, 4, and 1. Um, so what I'll notice first, and I'm just going to uh, point this stuff out to you, um, is that if I look at this, these are my inputs f of x is always the output for a function. And so the, I, the question is, how do we um, think about this function? And if I look at um, this question, it's asking me if it's a rec what's the recursive function for this. So I'll get to this in just a minute, and we'll see if it's right. But let's go ahead and think about what the recursive function for this is. And then we'll look at what the explicit function is uh, for it. And then I'll help you answer the question. So um, we'll start with the recursive function. And so the recursive function is going to define f of x. It's going to say, here, I'm going to tell you what f of x is. Um, and remember, f of x is the output. So it's going to say, here's how you find the outputs. And it's going to do it with two pieces of information, which is why we have this big uh, brace here. Um, so the first piece of information says, um, I want the output to be 64 when x equals 1. And that is exactly um, this piece of information right here. Um, and so that's the first piece of information. The second piece of information is how does it change? And what I'm going to notice here is that I'm taking 64 and I'm multiplying it by a particular number each time. That number happens to be 1 fourth. Um, you may have thought, well, it's dividing by 4, um, and that's fine. Um, but remember that dividing by 4 is the same as multiplying by 1 fourth. Um, so 
what that says is that if I want to find the next f of x term, so if I want to find, um, let me get the right highlighter here, if I want to find 2 comma 16, um, I'm going to have to take what I had before, I'm going to have to take 64 and multiply it by 1 fourth. Um, and so the function says this, it says, well, um, you take whatever you had last, f of x minus 1, so if I want to know what f of x is, I have to look at f of x minus 1, that's the last term, um, where the term just before is another way, and I multiply it by 1 fourth. And that happens when x is greater than 1. And so what that says is that if I, if I want to find out what the fourth term is, if I want to find out how to get um, the output for x equals 4, this recursive definition, um, it tells me that I need to take what I had before, which is 4, multiply it by 1 fourth to get my output of 1. And so that's a recursive definition. When you break it all down, um, it really has two really important pieces of information in it, um, where it starts and how it changes. Um, so you can translate this whole thing really briefly into starts at 64, changes by timesing by 1 fourth. Um, let's look at the explicit version of this function. I know this question doesn't ask for it, but I just want to give you the example. Um, so again, I'm, I'm looking at the same exact function, so I'm going to call it the same thing. This is f of x. Um, these are two ways of talking about the same thing, which is, um, let's say if you're talking about yourself, somebody could address you by your last name or your first name, and in either case, you should answer. So um, the explicit function is going to be more like functions that you've seen. And so this one's going to start at 64, and it multiplies by 1 fourth. Because it's a multiplication pattern, this is an exponential function, and so I need an exponent up here. Um, but um, what you'll notice is that the starting point for these things don't start out at zero, like all the things you've looked at in the past, and so I need to put this little guy in here um, so that I have x minus 1, and it says I'm starting at 1, um, which means that you need to shift back. Um, that's just a convention for this kind of thing. So if you want your starting point to happen at x equals 1 right here, um, you need to put x minus 1 um, in your function uh, for the input. Um, all right, and so these two functions are exactly the same. They say exactly the same thing. I'm going to highlight exactly the same thing. It starts at 64 and multiplies by 1 fourth over and over again. The reason this one down here is explicit is that it says if I know what x is, you just plug x in and calculate. Um, the reason this one up here is called recursive is that you have to know where it starts and then you have to proceed by taking the last thing and multiplying by the next thing. Last thing times one fourth, last thing times one fourth, last thing times one fourth. The operation recurs over and over again in order to find the outputs. Um, so Recursive functions are really useful in a variety of ways, um, but uh, they are important because they um, define an important type of function um, in uh, a way that is helpful in like computer programming and that kind of thing. Um, so if I look at this, I'm going to go ahead and look back at my recursive and explicit functions thing. It starts at 64, it multiplies by 1 fourth each time, so this yes does represent it correctly. Um, some of the questions you'll find here um, are going to, uh, again, do the same kind of thing. And so I'm going to look at this. It's going to multiply. This says, if I look down here, it starts at 5. And this indeed starts at 5, so that's good. And then this says to find y of t minus 1, I have to multiply, sorry, y of t, I have to take the term right before it and multiply by 5. Um, but when I look at this table, this is a multiplying by 5. It is multiplying by 2. 5 times 2 is 10, 10 times 2 is 20, 20 times 2 is 40. So this does not represent it. Um, I'm just kind of blazing through here so I can get to a type of uh, problem that I'm interested in. Um, this one doesn't match because the starting point is 0, not 1. Hmm, why are they giving me so many of these? This one's adding 7, not subtracting 7. So I'm going to say no again. All right, give me a translation. Here we go. Okay, this is the kind of problem I was looking for. 
Um, all right, so I'm going to go back to my notes here. I'm going to make a new entry for a new example. Um, I'm going to put my function f of x. Um, so there's my table, 1, 2, 3, 4, and then 34, 28, 22, and then 16. Um, so I need to define this thing as a recursive function. Um, so the first thing I'm going to notice is that when I look over at these types of answers over here, um, there's only two recursive functions given. So if I look back at my notes up here, recursive functions um, tell you where they start and how they continue. Um, and so I need something with that big brace. And so these last two functions are actually explicit functions. So those are right out. I'm just going to, I'm going to look at the first two to see which one works. Um, so I'm going to go back here. I need to do some analysis of the problem. Um, so I'm going to notice that it starts at 34. And then it seems to proceed in the following way. I, the pattern I'm noticing is that it's taking away 6. And so it starts at 6, or sorry, it starts at 34, takes away. Six each time. Um, so given that that's the case, um, I'm going to, I, for these problems, I tend to, if you want, at the beginning, just go ahead and write the, it's the recursive function, because that's a good way to practice and get it in your brain. So I'm going to write f of x is equal to, um, it starts at 34 when x equals 1, and then it's going to take whatever I had before, f of x minus 1, and it's going to subtract 6. And so that's when x is greater than 1. Um, so I look for one that matches that. So here I have f of x minus 1 is subtracting 6. Here I have f of x minus 1 is subtracting 6x. Um, that may look familiar like one of your old linear functions, but this is actually combining a linear function with a recursive function. Um, don't often put those together, so I'm going to go ahead and select this guy and it seems to work out. Um, so I've got my five in a row, and you can notice that I've already practiced that, but um, good one on me. Um, let's go back to our notes here for a minute. So I'm going to fill in some of my Cornell notes, uh, big questions here. Um, I'm going to put what are the important terms when dealing with explicit and recursive functions. Um, I'm going to put how do you write explicit and recursive function. Um, and then this is just an example. Um, you'll leave a space at the bottom so you can write your summary. Um, hopefully this is helpful. There's some other types of problems that you might notice, but um, just looking back over our work, we dealt with some linear patterns. We also dealt with some exponential patterns, and so you need to be flexible enough to deal with either of those. Um, if you need help after you've taken these notes with completing some of the work, um, don't hesitate to ask.